I'm a new lion. I wouldn't even call myself a lion yet. I'm just tiptoeing into the den. Hi y'all, welcome back. It's your girl Yemi.com. Thank you for joining me, internet friends. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and overall vibing. We are here for a good time, not a long time. Although it has been a long time. So maybe both, who's to say? I am doing another fan journey of sorts. The group we're talking about today is only one of. If you don't know, they are a six person group, previously seven. Um, they debuted in 2019. And they really popped off with uh, a lot of music. They are the first boy group out of 8D Creative or RSVP as they're also known. I'm not really sure when I was going into like their distribution it was a lot of CN CJ entertainment which is also giving me hesitation for making this video because me and them have a copyright battle that has never just really put me back in the same place but it's 8D creative so I'm, I'm hoping this video doesn't get blocked. My also pause is that they distribute under Stone Music Entertainment, which is already a little bit shady. I think it's a distribution under CJ Entertainment and Music. Um, but I thought they were closed down, but I guess maybe just their talent department is closed down and their distribution is still open. They have distribution for a bunch of groups, including Wake One, which we know does Kepler, and uh, Yenna's company as well. So again, not the most reliable people so far that I see that are attached to Stone Music Entertainment. The whole history of it, including Mnet Media, Jellyfish, everything, is kind of suspicious to me. It seems like a strange game of succession, honestly, with how all the companies keep switching up and a particularly not trustworthy one in my book, but that's just my thoughts. I guess they're connected to other labels like AOMG, Higher Music, Wake One, Jellyfish, Blockberry, Swing, and then they distribute for other people, including Feel Good Music, who I believe BB is under, and more. So that's also another one of my hesitations. They also do KQ Entertainment, which ATs is under. So it's just confusing to me. I think it's just a sticky web. So I wanted to be careful while digging through this. Their main concept that they consistently kept throughout, um, I would say, is BL, the boys love concept. Um, and they're paired off. Originally, there was 223. But now since there's six members, it's 222. Each of them are paired off in their own subunit of sorts in their own little BL pairing, which you can really see and uh, consistently vibe off of through a lot of their music and something else that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Now I'm going to talk about how I found only one of. It's probably similar to probably a lot how a lot of you who are seeing this video found only one of and that is their libido performance. Libido. I knew nothing of Only One Of in 2019. In 2019, I was still waist deep in denial that I was back into K-pop. I was still just into BTS, a little bit of dream catcher here and there, rediscovering my love of Shiny, kind of hearing whispers in the air of Seventeen. So 2019, I was really like in my bag because I went through this phase of like, I was like into K-pop when I was in high school. I let it go. I became Afrocentric. I only listened to Lauren Harrell and Erica Badu. Then a little bit of EDM started sneaking into there. Pop rock, all this other stuff started getting back into K-pop. And I was like, no, only BTS. I will only listen to BTS. And then Astro came along. And I was like, okay, you know what? Boy groups. I'll just stick to boy groups. I'll be a boy group stan. That'll, that's what'll do it to me. And then Dreamcatcher came along. And then I was like, okay, you know what? That's fine. Boy groups and girl groups, sure. But never the tween shall mix. 
Okay, Dreamcatcher, Mama Moo, you are my, you are, you are, you got me, okay? And then Card showed up, and I was like, okay, okay, okay. This is getting ridiculous. It's fine, boy groups, girl groups, mixed groups, as long as it's no more than seven or eight members. I can't handle anything more than that. Actually, it was no more than seven members, and then ATs came along, and I was like, fine, 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 up to ante. No more than eight members. And then 17, and I was like, you know what, throw the whole rule book out. I'm clearly inconsistent, and I'm just back into K-pop, that's what it is. And that's when my denial set in. Anyways, that's to say, 2019 was looking like a very different Yemi in a very different room, and doing a very different thing, listening to very different things. So I didn't really get into them at their debut, like some uh, lions have, but I heard about Libido. And when Libido came out, I believe it was 2021, I want to say, I heard about the, the group that um, I want to say threw Mnet into a tizzy with their choreography. And if you love, uh, if you love or or if you know me, you know that I love a shit starter. I love people who kind of break the mold. I love people who also uh, get in trouble for things. And their choreography for libido went like this. This is shocking news. Shocking. I'm shocked. <laughs> Korea, the ever growing, kind of still a little bit homophobic and misogynistic country that it is, was like, no, 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 we don't even let Jungkook, Jungkook show his tattoos. You think we're going to let you show us grabbing? No, absolutely not. So I heard about that whole thing and then I listened to Libido and it was kind of weirdly my vibe but weirdly not. It was something I would listen to if it wasn't K-pop. Because it was K-pop, I didn't want to hear it. So I, but I, I, I was addicted to the part where it goes, yes. I would get so addicted to that part and just listen to that on repeat. And so that's kind of how I got into knowing of only one of. I put it on the back burner. I was like, I don't need anything else in my system. I Again, I have too many things. I'm busy. I'm busy, busy girl, especially in the realm of K-pop. Oh my god, my mood has a comeback. It's too much for me. And then um, in June, they released, um, I believe Yoo Jung was the first one to release his solo of the duet tracks, basically, is how I refer to them in my mind. And he released Begin. Begin, 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 begin with the best. Let me take it, take it, take it, take it, take your dare. And I loved Begin. I think Begin is still my favorite of all of the songs, even though I do love each and every song for what it is. I think Begin is probably my favorite. It is most my vibe and what I look for in consistencies of K-pop and regular pop in general. So I was like, okay, yes. And they have this like storyline. I wonder if all these stories are gonna interconnect. Smash cut to like months later, the next one comes out. And the next one comes out, and the next one comes out, and the next one comes out. By then I had forgotten it and then watched them all when they all came out randomly. I again, wasn't super into only one of. They were just something that was kind of lingering in the back of my mind. I was like, yeah, I did like that one song, kind of. Like I'd catch myself singing that randomly on a Tuesday. Um, but I wasn't super dedicated. They recently had a comeback. And this is where I have decided to dedicate my life to Christ. No, um, I've decided to starting the beginnings, the opening ups of having only one of be my, like, in my rotation of K-pop that I really love to listen to. I went back and I listened to all the other stuff, Soul Drift, Chrome Hearts, which I loved Chrome Hearts. Like, I was like, I mi how did I miss Chrome Hearts? Push your brother through Chrome Hearts. That was on me. That was a me problem because blue hair Jungji and like Chrome Hearts, the choreography, the song, love it. Beautiful, excellent, excellent at the highest caliber. Okay. Oh, 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 
Basically what happened is that they put out a BL called Bump Up Business and it kind of re-caught my attention. Like again, one, only one of us has always kind of been in the back burner of my mind, but this specific BL caught the attention because I knew that they were paired off. I knew that they had these like cute stories and I wanted to see how they, they would translate that into an actual like full story. And it's become very popular for K-pop groups to make TV shows and movies based off of their group, based off of their life. Cut to when I was again back in K-pop days of like 20... 13 2015 when EXO had that random TV show where they were neighbors with that one girl yeah okay I was there I remember but recently a lot of k-pop groups have been making BL specifically if you don't know what BL is BL stands for boys love it's usually a drama in which the two main characters following love are both of the penis variety there have been a couple groups that have done this. I think a shoulder to cry on or a shoulder to lean on is something has done it. Um, I know Holland had one that was like an ocean themed one. There's been a few, a couple. And th so this is not a new thought to do. This TV show at the very least is not a new thought to do. But it is something that they did decide to do. And I'm excited for them and I'm happy for them. And I really did like the drama. The acting was, you know, shaky, but they're like, they're singers. I didn't expect them to give me styles 3b team wolf like type of dramatics and acting i wasn't expecting a michelle yo lever oscar nominated performance an oscar winner level performance you know what i mean so i kind of kept that in my mindset especially um you know a lot of bls aren't really well acted as well a lot of them are but then a lot of them some of them aren't I'm just glad to be honest that there's at least really one strong actor in each pairing. I think with Mill and Nine, Mill is trying, but Nine is carrying in Bump Up Business. I think with Rie and Junji, I think Junji's pretty good, uh, depending on the circumstance. But Rie isn't actually that bad, so they're kind of the strongest pair. And with KB and Yujung, I think that if you don't give Yujung lines, he's great. But KB carries, like... If he is not given cartoonish, villainous things to do, he's pretty amazing and believable. Uh, <laughs> 저 먼저 가볼게요. 셋! 안녕하세요! 저희는 라이언 아트, 임지훈, 강희진입니다. 라이언! 라이언 아트! 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 라이언 them. I started to watch their tour videos. I realized I had just missed them in New York, which made me sad again because it started giving me flashbacks of when I just missed Seventeen. And they had a song evergreen that i actually really liked in the show and then i heard that they had a comeback coming and the last comeback i had seen was like a year ago which is pretty long in k-pop to go without putting out any music or anything and i listened to this comeback and i love this comeback I'm drawn to you like gravity, gravity, yeah. I think this is exactly what I wanted for them. I think that unlike in other fan journeys, I'm not just going to sit here and rave. I actually do have a critique section coming up uh, specifically for them because I want them to thrive and be great. But what I will say is that this album is what I want for them consistently. I want some the ability to choose a title track that is just perfect enough to push people into the album. It doesn't necessarily need to be everyone's favorite track. Dopamine is not necessarily my favorite track, but it is the perfect track to slip you into the album. The music video is very simple. It's a Calvin Klein ad, basically. And I really hope that Calvin Klein, this is in my critique section, but I, I really do hope that Calvin Klein ran them their money because I did buy and order Calvin Klein's. Like even John Cook couldn't get me to order Calvin Klein's. Somehow, only one of them did. So I really did hope they got a bag for that. But with that being said, I want to say that I do really love them. I, if I had to choose a bias, gun to my head, it had, would have to be KB. Cause I remember every time On these days I feel like you and me Heartbreak anniversary to you and me 
because I think that it is so funny that it's just this, uh, as Renee Rapp would call, decrepit old man. Kind of like very like old, well I'm assuming like decrepit, like old like. Watching these children act a fool. Like he's the only one who's actually older than me by a mile. Like he's my older sister's age. And then the next one is literally a year younger than me. It's such a jump and it's so funny to me but I actually really love it because he actually has like young boy energy with bad knees. Like he doesn't have bad knees, but like he gives me that like, I'm young as fuck at heart. <laughs> but my body sometimes, even though it is sculpted to the gods, cannot keep up with these children. <laughs> so I do love that energy that he gives me. So I would say KB is my favorite as of right now. With that being said, I love them. I've said I love them. I've talked about how I got into them. I've talked about their new comeback that I really, again, dopamine is so good. Uh, before I go on into my little critique section, I do want to address one thing. I don't, I don't want to say that I don't care uh, about their sexual orientations, but like, that's, I'm not sitting here like digging for information trying to see if they're actually LGBTQIA. That's not my job. That's not what I'm here for. At the end of the day, whether they are, it's great. If they're not, that's still great. But their concept is BL, which is what we're going off of. They support LGBTQIA rights, which is good. So they, I'm going off of their concept. Whether they're straight, gay, whatever uh, level of the spectrum they are, that's not my business. Like, I don't sit here and wonder if ATs is actually pirates. No, it's their concept. Whether... Yosang is actually looting ships I don't know but you know it's the same thing here so I just want to make that very very clear because I've seen some discourse about like trying to decipher their sexuality and I don't think that anyone should ever try and decipher someone else's sexuality for them I think that that is 100% wrong so just wanted to be clear on that but I also do have a few critiques which I will need my handy dandy notebook for okay some kind of gay Sherpa, right? I'm not the drama. You're the drama. My first critiques, I'm going to break them down by concept and then by music. For concept, I think that they should have debuted with a movie, kind of like P1 Harmony. If you don't know P1 Harmony, another group that I super love, they came out with a movie. They came out with a big budget. I think they spent like a million dollars on their movie, um, but it was a big budget movie. I think that's how they debuted. <laughs> My favorite thing about the movie is like it feels like a like a movie it feels like a real like you know go to the theater film movie that and i feel like for only one of if they had came out and debuted with a movie in 2019 where like bl isn't as saturated i feel like it would have drawn them the exact attention and crowd that they're currently trying to keep I want to say um with now 2023 there's like a thousand BLs coming out every second of the year but in 2019 it was like I think absolute BL has a post about it and maybe I'll put it here but I think in like 2023 there's been like over 200 BLs out or just under 200 BLs and in 2019 there was like 40 so like I feel like if they had came out with a movie it would have solidified their concept while also gaining them an entirely new fan base that is both in and outside of Korea. I think that that would have been a great move on their part. And I don't really know 8D Creative, but I mean, I don't think that they're a music company. So my guess is that they're a film company. That's always where I go to next. Um, or a distribution company. So I feel like well within their possibilities. But we can't harp on the negatives. We can't harp on what's already happened. We continue and we push on. They should learn about properly utilizing and being consistent with their concepts, a la Dreamcatcher. 
Dreamcatcher, I will say, and ATs is, does it as well with their whole concepts. There's not a lot of groups. I want to say there's not a lot of groups that have a consistent concept throughout everything. I mean, there's groups that have vague ones like TXT. Their whole concept is kind of like youth and following them through their youth or whatever. But that can be showcased in so many different ways. ATs, their whole concept is being pirates, but like sometimes they skew cyberpunk, sometimes they skew, skew other ways. Um, they have timelines, storylines, so it gets a little messy for me, but like it, it goes off, you know what I mean? But Dreamcatcher for me is like the group that is great and best at consistently showcasing their concept in their title tracks while still giving themselves flexibility everywhere else. They are always within a storyline of some sort. They bookend everything and it keeps it consistent and clear and it shows that they learn from their mistakes with Minx 9 or whatever uh, whatever they were, where they were, what, Minx 9? No, no, Minx, 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 when they were Minx, it shows that they've learned from there. They should take a note from Dreamcatcher and create a consistency across for their concept of BL and I think that would help them become so strong because they are officially coupled off, but other than like, I want to say libido, there isn't really any consistency or showcasing that, that concept of BL in within their music videos, their title tracks, or their outside outskirt in, in, in stuff, like you know what I mean, to really consistently wrap that theme and concept up. I think it's a bankable one, pay for gay, but, <laughs> oh God. But you know, it, I think that they're not utilizing it as it should be as well. I said, and the way that they should learn, <laughs> the way they advertise yourself from a uh, to the world from a small company from Alexa. That's what I think. Th that's who they. I think they should learn that from. Alexa is in a, a company that is again. She was their first artist. I think they were a video company. Her whole name comes from the fact that uh, Alexa is a camera. Like her, I think her name is like is Alexis, but like Alexa comes from the fact that it's an Ale Alexa camera. She was from a video game company or a, like a CGI company. You can see it in a lot of her videos, but she's also very good at marketing herself to the world outside, fully knowing that she's from a smaller company. She's consistently correlating herself to Dive Studios, which is Eric Nam. Please turn on Amazon Prime. We have Alexa here with oh! us! Who is like essentially, yeah, I guess a solo artist from a smaller company, but like Eric Nam is very big in America. He's very big a lot of places consistently everywhere. Everyone knows what Dive Studio is. The tickets sell out, you know what I mean? And she's always consistently like been able to link herself to that so that people who don't know her can watch Dive Studios and be like oh my god she's so funny and cool yeah uh, her performing in whatever world's greatest song or whatever in the US representing Oklahoma but showcasing k-pop and winning it Wonderland was the hit Wonderland was the banger was the big bang that insinuated and incinerated a lot of things and kept her consistently going on Her comeback after that being uh, in vogue amazing she learned how to market make herself marketable from a smaller perspective to a wider audience and I think that's something that they could be like learn from her let's talk about the music because we can say everything we want about concepts about nomenclatures about like being consistent whatever however and or we got to talk about the music because if your music is trash it doesn't matter how like good you are it doesn't matter how marketable you are it doesn't matter what you're doing on the outside because if your music is trash people will not come and listen so from a musical perspective i also have a couple notes they which nine really because nine really writes a lot of the music Look, my toe, my accent and i got to drink not like a certain why are you crying? 
they all really contribute to it as much as they can but nine i think is the one who really writes all of the music i think he has credits on all the new all the stuff on the new album he's had credits for a lot of stuff in the past and he's really talented i want them to nurture him i think they should uh, not they or nine should uh learn how to be have a consistent color and sound across all of your songs without stifling yourself creatively i think that they he could really learn that from woozy it's similar to 17 how like woozy is the producer of 17 but everyone will contribute where they feel see fit where they like where they fit in i think that's similar to, with only one of i think nine is the main producer but then everyone will contribute or can contribute where they want to i think that from woozy he can learn how to have a specific color and a specific consistent sound that isn't stifling creatively if you hear a 17 song like even Suga said it when he was talking with Woozy. If you hear a 17 song, you know it's a 17 song. Oh, 아랑고했다 라는 게 아랑고했다 라는 게 어, 나는 그래서 되게 신선했어요. 그렇다고 세븐틴의 색깔을 완전히 없애지는 음. 않고 이걸 쭉 가는 아, 이게 음악 하는 사람이랑 얘기를 하면 이걸 알아봐 주면 너무 기분이 좋단 말이야. You know the color sounds like a 17 song. Even with Boo Suk Soon, it sounds less like 17 but it still sounds like Akinda, like it still sounds like Monse, it still has that theatrical energy that 17 is known for and Woozy's just so good about putting his foot in it uh, with every song that he creates it, that still has a similar tone, vibe, color that is so known to the Woozy brand that he has built for himself. For example, he has a song with IOI and the song is beautiful but if you listen to it you can tell it was written by Woozy. Take that song put it next to If You Leave Me. Similar vibes immediately even though one is sung completely by a girl group I will be using the cover of that song because I like it better than the one that girls sang because the one the girls sang they were crying whatever. But if you put it next to If You Leave Me, same vibe, same energy, same color, same tone, very woozy coded. If someone tries to make a sound that sounds like like 17, you can immediately clock it. And I think that's something that I think I want only one of to be able to find with themselves, like their consistent color and sound. They have made miles in creating something like their kind of garage, uh, messy, clean cut. Like they have a, a sound that is very consistent, but I want it to become, I want Woozy to be able to teach Nine how to create it and make it and form it into being their sound. Next up, from Namjoon and Suga. I'm just giving them people to learn from, honestly. From Namjoon and Suga, or basically the whole rap line, you can include Hobi into this. I want them to teach him how to build a narrative and tell a story throughout an album and the song itself. I think storytelling is so important in K-pop, in music in general, I don't think it happens enough in K-pop, which is one of the detriments and why people look down on K-pop. Um, I don't think that they should, I think that they do though, because narrative and storytelling is some of the most powerful pieces in a song, in a Lana Del Rey, in a, you know, Broadway musical. Narrative and storytelling is almost king to the story and it also just helps build a consistency. The reason why I mention it is because a lot of the times they'll have like these chunks of like writing out literature and stuff for their songs, for their title tracks, 
for their little their solos that they did and the song is good the piece that they wrote is good but the correlation doesn't always math for me like the, the it doesn't always equal equal it doesn't always make sense to me it feels like they found something really smart and good to say in the description and then they just put out a song that they really liked and I want them to kind of balance out narratively and storytelling wise lastly now that we've gone through concept and music my last little critique I'm so sorry I feel like this is less of a fan journey and more me critiquing them but I'm just I'm doing this because I love you their social media needs to be revamped um there's no consistency with it this all came from I heard dopamine I love dopamine I immediately thought of a challenge for dopamine here it is kind of plays off of the whole denim vibe gives it a transition because transitions are fun like obviously you can do the dance challenge but you know there's other other people aren't good dancers but they're great at makeup and they're they're good at costumes they're good at something so it gives it a little something you know what I mean I went to try and record it I couldn't find the song I had to go to stone music to find the song even when I went to only one of TikTok page the song was muted on their TikTok page as if the song the sound had been removed because of copyright which it's their song so that doesn't make sense and this is two days after the song came out like this is after the song is out two days after the song is out it's muted on their TikTok page it did eventually get fixed I believe a week after but the first couple days of marketing a song are really important but to be fair that's the least of TikTok's music worries right now. And it's actually one of the only K-pop songs not muted now. So I guess a win is a win. That's their page. It's their song. Why is it not able to be on there? Why do I have to go to Stone Entertainment, who is not even their like company, is just their distributor to do that. Another thing that I want to talk about is the only one of exchange partners i loved that video i the, the the one from a year ago i think they recently put out one three weeks ago which i'm glad they did the part two because my issue was that there was no part two but it's a year apart and there's like again no consistency between the vibes of whoever made that video and whoever made this video there's no consistency to it but my issue mainly is that that was a really fun video i like them when they're interacting with each other. I think that when they're in interviews, it gives me a zero base one energy, which is like, zero base one is great when they're like by themselves doing their own little dilly dolly thing. They're funny, they're great. They When they you give them a task and they have to interact with each other, funny, great, phenomenal. But the second that you are asking them questions and like looking for answers and insight and anything and looking for them to be funny, I think the funniness gets sucked out of them for me at least I no longer laughing I'm like forcing myself to laugh as opposed to their natural personalities and I feel the same way about only one of I think in the partner exchange video very funny very consistent you can see that they know each other you can see that they like each other in their they're razzing each other up very cute when you go and search only one of there's not a lot of interviews with them but they did the lineup interview that was very funny very cute like they're talking about themselves they're interacting you get that energy as opposed to like there's another video that's similar to that where they're just it feels a little bit more stiff and a little bit more wooden the content that they make and the consistency of the content are two things that need to be addressed i will forever live off of going 17 and run bts being the best at creating a consistent audience a consistent vibe and feel for a show that lets you get to know who the people are outside of the music that you're listening to because that's a big thing in k-pop it's getting to know who these people are that's how you keep an audience even when the comebacks suck itsy not mr vampire i love mr vampire just to be clear <laughs> but 
like you can't tell me sneakers wasn't a flop but I stayed because you know why because Cherung is a savage bitch and I love that okay I love that for her so I stayed I stayed she's a good man Savannah a good man good man anyways what I'm trying to say is that yeah their consistency of the videos are just not there like make that consistent and then when you do have the time to do a quality the time and budget to do a quality shoot make it an event make it a big thing save all the money up make it a big thing and then everything else be like low-key low-key and have consistencies if I'm searching for a part two to a video for a full year before I get it I'm not paying attention anymore I'm mad even now, the part two of the video, I'm like, it could have been good. I don't even know if it was good. Maybe I'm just mad that it came out three weeks ago when the video came out a year ago. That's wait a year. They had different hairstyles. You know how hard it is to tell people apart with different hairstyles? Count the haircuts. How can you tell who's who? Haircuts, Parker, count the haircuts. And another note on the consistency being an issue, for an instance, Chrome Hearts. Let's talk about it, because it's still that on the page. And again, if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. Maybe I just missed something. I'm a new lion. I wouldn't even call myself a lion yet. I'm just tiptoeing into the den. However, why is it spelled Chrome Arts on one video and then Chrome Hearts on another video and then it's one of those two on the album? Is it Chrome Hearts or Chrome Arts? You can fix that. Like you can still to this day, I can go change the name of my YouTube videos. You can go in and fix that. Why is it two different things? It's confusing. The song is a banger. Don't make me confused thinking about why the title is different. <sighs> With all that being said, those are my critiques. I do need to give them flowers for their dancing. All of their choreo is really intricate and amazing and they're actually very talented. That being said, with the critique a little bit, I will say that I think that they should have dance practices for their solo songs because the only place you can currently see all these things are on tour. Insert videos here. And as you can see, all of the dances are so cool and so talented and amazing and dynamic and deserve like a 4K look. And I feel like, again, that series is amazing. The dancing is amazing. The storytelling is amazing. And it just needs to be nurtured a little bit more in that way. And I think the first step is giving them full dance practices. With that being said, I do, despite this conversation, I do really do love only one of. I think that they're very talented. I think that they're very brilliant. I think that they're going places. I think that if they stay consistent to what they're doing right now, it'll be a really good space to have them in. I'm here for the ride. Stay in only one of. Listen to the new album. I love it. With that being said, I'm Yummy.com. Don't worry. I'll be back. So stay tuned, internet friends. Bye.